All right, hello, hello, hello. Cheers, Kevin here, and welcome back to Minecraft Agoraphobia. Hi, how you doing? Um, I have been a little busy. I went ahead and redesigned just a tiny bit of this. I actually removed these pillars so it would have more room for the sheep. I finally got the sheep into all their cages, and that's just fantastic. But that's not what we are going to be doing today. Um, ended up putting access hatches down here. Um, what we are going to be doing today is writing a program for this robot to do the feeding down here and then the harvesting up here because we've got this wheat we need to make sure we harvest it so we can feed the sheep and everybody will be happy so one thing that uh some numbers we're gonna have to keep in mind is that there are six cages and we want to feed at least two sheep each time we go around so each time that we make a lap we will need 12 wheat and right now we'll produce not 12 wheat i don't know some Let's see. Well, I mean, not not 12. Well, the, the thing is, it takes a while for this to grow. So we're going to have to figure out timings for how frequently we want to do laps and how frequently we want to come up here and gather more and all of that fun stuff. But let me make sure. OK, that's off. Good. Um, first thing that we need to do, though, is uh, if we're going to be writing these scripts, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the in-game uh, editor. And in fact, it's not even recommended by the, the devs of the mod that we do all of our coding and stuff uh, in game. Although I would eventually love to figure out a way to get that to work. I have some have some ideas, some 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 stuff that I want to play with so that we can have uh, stuff like Vim inside uh, this game. But in the meantime, uh, what I would like to do is be able to write code outside of the game and put it into the game. Now to do that, I could just copy and paste, but that seems cheaty to me. Um, rather, there's a separate card uh, that we can plug into our computers. I think I've got a computer case in here. Yes, I do. Um, there's a separate card that we can plug into these computers uh, that uh, is called an internet card. And it allows us, much as the name might suggest, uh, to do internet things. Unfortunately, the internet card is a tier two card. So let's actually go ahead and build it. So I have the recipe up on uh, on one of my screens here. The recipe, for it, so we first require an interweb, <laughs> which is uh, a clever name for things. Let's go ahead and grab. Uh, so we need, well, we only need one of those. Let's go bop and bop. And then I need some string. Where do I have? That's not quite enough string. I've got string somewhere. There we go. Okay. And the interweb is an ender pearl surrounded by st not bone meal. Gosh, what's wrong with me today? Okay. An ender pearl surrounded by string. Okay. There we go. And now we have one interweb. Congratulations, you win one interweb. You can connect to it using an internet card. Beware, don't feed the trolls. So, okay. Oh, does it actually give us the recipe? Oh, no, we just... Okay, now we know how to make an interweb. Hooray for us. Congratulations. Okay, so the card itself is a little bit more complex. Requires a redstone torch, an obsidian, and a microchip tier 2. So I think... We may need to make some more microchips. I'm not positive. Let's go ahead and double check that here. If we go, uh, I know what I thought. Okay, I think I have the materials we need. So we need to make a card base. Um, to do that, we actually need some uh, iron and gold nuggets. Let's grab some of those. There we go. And now we should be able to make a card. Oh, I don't have my, uh, there we go. Okay, put some other stuff away for now. All right. A card base. We need that. And then that goes here. Uh, we have an obsidian here. We have a torch up there. Uh, I'm not positive now. Let me let me look at the recipe. I'm I'm cheating. Oh no, wait, wait. We need to make we need to make microchips tier twos first. Let's do that. Microchip tier two. There we go. Lovely microchip tier twos. Okay. Uh, now we can put our card base here. We can put our, we are almost running out of recipes for me to forget, by the way, which is great news. So microchip there, an obsidian there, and then, what was it, a gold? No, it wasn't a gold. It was the interweb, right. Okay, let's grab our interweb, and we have an internet card. Oh, this card allows making HTTP requests and using real TCP sockets. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, we'll notice now that we cannot put this in here, but it is blinking and it looks lovely. So that's great. Uh, I, I don't know what that whole sound effect is. Uh, if anybody happens to know what that one is referring to, please, please let me know because I'm curious. Uh, what we need to do instead is uh, build ourselves a tier two 
computer case. We should be able to reuse just about everything. Um, and actually, I'm going to need that chest that I just put in. Where did I put it? Yeah, I put it in here. Let's uh, grab that because, let's see. I think we actually made a tier two computer case. Well, I have. I think I did it off camera, but we had to use that for the basis of our redone robot um, so that we could insert the inventory uh, manager upgrade and, and assorted things like that. Okay. So, um, also off camera, I have taken the liberty of routing some uh, cable <laughs> up here uh, so that we have power. This is coming all the way down from the basement, so that's good news. Uh, we still have a bunch of power here. Um, eh, not gathering more of it, but you know, we'll eventually get our program working and then that'll be great. Uh, let's go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and say we'll plop this down there and then yeah, for now, let's let's grab our monitor. We gotta grab up all our computer pieces uh, that I stripped out of our old container. So we've got a screen, we've got a keyboard, um, another computer case for, oh, right, because we used one in the uh, in the old version of the robot, some memory, an EEPROM, more memory. Let me go ahead and get this all into our computer and get us booted up. Throw in the EEPROM. Um, let's see, I've got the graphics card in here. Let's go ahead and toss in our internet card, oh wait, hang on a sec. Oh, right, okay, good, Phew. I was afraid this wasn't gonna fit or something. All right, we can put two hard disks in here, which is nice, I'm st and we can upgrade, we can put in a tier two CPU and stuff. We can definitely upgrade components here uh, as we choose. But let's go ahead and turn this on for now, and there we go, we've got ourselves a computer again. Uh, the screen is small, we could probably do with uh, building an, an older, a, a better screen. All right, um, let's see, yeah, okay. Low memory systems, it's mad about me even trying to list things. Uh, if we type list, there we go. Okay, um, let's edit that SHRC. This is from my old attempts to uh, run, for, actually, don't even need to do that. We can just say remove uh, SHRC and clear. Is clear a thing? Yes, it is. Okay, so now what we should be able to do is use a command called wget. Let's, let's type man wget so we get the manual for that. Download files via HTTP. The wget program, uh, webget, allows downloading programs from the interwebs given the URL to download from. Let's verify that this works now that we have an internet card. So we'll wget HTTP, and uh, there's only one example here, example.org. Little known fact, example.org is actually part of, okay, so actually I'm wondering, HTTP requests fail, why? Attempted to call a nil value, you must buffer, blah, blah, buffered, right, interesting. Is this a memory issue maybe? It seemed like the same, oops, LSD, ha. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think we're probably running into memory issues. Let's go ahead and, and create some, some higher end memory so we can throw it in the system because we're gonna be using that machine for more stuff. Where the heck is my crafting bench? Here we go, all right. Uh, memory. All right, here's here's the tier two. Uh, what do we need for that? We need two of these iron ingots. Yeah, okay, we can we can we can do that. I think. Um, let's grab some more uh, microchip tier twos. What do we need for that? Some more iron ingots. Fair enough. There we go. Microchip tier two, and memory tier two. All right, perfect. Let's grab two of those. And goodbye, old ram. Uh, I suppose we should probably turn this off. Um, take out the tier one memory, put in tier two memory, and now we should be so much better and stuff. All right, um, now if we list, we can actually list stuff. So hooray for us. Let's wget example.org. And it downloads and it saves it. So let's go ahead and look at example.org. And there we go, we got the HTML. So not exactly as fancy as a browser, but Open Sans Helvetica New, and it says, hey, this is an example. This domain is established for use, is for illustrative examples and documents. You may use this domain in examples without prior coordination for ask, or asking for permission. This example.org is actually part of the spec. It needs to be, uh, it needs to be there on the web. It is, if you're ever using an example, this is the, domain that you should be using, not blah at, you know, test.com or whatever. Um, but anyway, so example.org and wonderful. So now we have access to the web in game. Now that means that if I jump out and we start coding, uh, we can just go ahead and grab scripts off of the web. We'll throw it onto this floppy disk and then get it into our robot. Okay, now we find ourselves in the world, the real world of fake computers. I'm, I'm running on a virtual machine on my Windows machine. This is a Linux machine running on Windows and I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and create a uh, folder to hold all of our code. 
And I will go ahead and uh, let's see. So we've got nothing in here right now. Let's go ahead and type git init. We're gonna create a repository and it's gonna be fantastic. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste uh, some test code uh, that I have worked out. Let me walk you through uh, what this is gonna do. So this is stuff, trying to re re replicate some stuff that I had done in a prior version of this series. But um, I want to avoid us having to type things like robot.forward, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh my gosh, look, I can paste again. Thank you, Vim. Ah, I really need to figure out a way to edit in Vim on in the, in the, in the game. I'm wondering if there's some way I can build a Telnet client. I don't know, um, it's something to consider anyway. Um, so what I've done here is I've created, well, ignore this for now. We're putting this here and we'll use it later. Um, so you call this uh, function move with a string of the path. And this is the way that I've basically said is that you're, you're going to optionally give a number and then the direction. So three F is three forward and then up and then right and then two back. Okay, so this is how these are broken out. So we pass that string in, and that, this way we can chain a bunch of movement together. And then I'll say for each step in this string.gmatch. And the thing about Lua is it doesn't have um, re standard regular expressions. It does have this sort of weird pattern matching syntax. Uh, percent D means a digit, and I've said zero or more of those. So match zero or more digits and then an, a uh, letter. So I said, for each of those, do everything inside this block. And what I've done inside here is I said, okay, we're gonna pull the quantity out. I'm gonna say string.match. Uh, yeah, so basically I pull out the digits um, and then say, if you didn't find any digits, we're assuming that uh, we're only doing the, moving in this direction once. And then I'm saying local direction is string sub negative one. What this does is it just gives us the substring um, at the, so the, the very last character of the match that we that we got out. So if we're coming in here, uh, step is equal to like 2f, this means the quantity is gonna equal two, and this means the direction is gonna equal f. So then we say for i equals one comma quantity, which is the way you do stuff like, um, it's, it's a way you do for loops in Lua. Um, you basically can give it a, uh, I, I could say for i equals one comma 10, and that would go through and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I think I can also give it an optional step size as well. So the way that it moves between those, we're not gonna worry too much about that. And then I say move dir in this direction. Actually, I wanna say move dir in this direction like this, and then I'm gonna call it. So the way that I'm doing, this is basically to avoid me having to do a bunch of if, if else ifs. I've created this thing, move dir is just, a map of those direction letters to the function that I actually want to call. So I'm going to look up what function I want to call. So if we if we imagine that we're evaluating f, I'm going to say, hey, give me the move dir associated with f, which is uh, uh, robot forward, uh, and then go ahead and call that. So I'm hoping this will work. I haven't tested it yet, so uh, we're going to have to see. But in order to see, we're going to have to push this, put this somewhere online. Um, <laughs> Three fur to be. I don't know why that is the thing, but who knows? Maybe that'll be the title of this <laughs> of this episode. Um, so that's test.lua. Let's go ahead. We've initialized. Um, if we go git status, we've got test.lua. Let's go ahead and add this, and we'll go ahead and call this our initial commit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now all we have to do is put this somewhere uh, where our in-game machine can access it. So to do that, I'm going to use hub. Um, and let me let me show you what hub is. Okay, so hub makes Git better with GitHub. It just allows us to do things like create repositories and deal with pull requests and all that sort of thing. Um, you can go ahead and visit hub.github.com to find out about it if you so choose, but it basically wraps around Git and yeah, that's great. Um, I actually don't need to type hub. I can just type git create and that'll work. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say git create and I could say dash dash private, but I'm not going to. It's saying updated origin, and then it says, hey, look, I just published your repository. Here's where it's at. And if we look here, the repository does exist, uh, but it doesn't, uh, it, I mean, it doesn't have any code because we have to push. So we'll go git push. Um, and actually, what I want to do is git push origin master. I have this alias to git up. So we can git up and git down, and it's basically just going to pull or push the the latest, uh, the, the whatever's on, on the current branch that we're on. Okay. 
So now if we refresh here, ooh, look, there is our test code. Fantastic, so test.lua is here, um, and there is our code. I'm gonna go ahead and click raw, and I'm going to, I did say I didn't wanna be copying and pasting stuff, but uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's fine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy this URL and snag this in the game and see if it'll run. Back in the real world, I mean, I mean, some some world, uh, let's go ahead and wget, uh, I think it's insert, there we go. Yeah, so we'll wget test.lua, and it has downloaded it, and now we can look at test.lua, and look at that, our code is now in the game, fantastic. Um, another thing that I wanna do though, is I wanna copy this to this floppy disk, so let's find out where that is, if we list mount. Uh, the floppy disk, did we give the floppy disk a name? Can we give the floppy, let's label the floppy disk. Uh, label, uh, let's see, label MNT6F4, and then we give it a label. Uh, what do we call it, flop, uh, we'll call it flop. There we go, and then if we type mount, um, it says, hey, flop is now mounted over here. So if we eject that, and then plug it back in, I think it'll mount to a different, no, it still mounts to slash six bar, whatever. Uh, but we can now see, yeah, so it actually gives us the name flop there. Great, okay, cool. I wanna copy this over to flop, please. Uh, let's copy, edit, what? Uh, copy test over to MNT6F4. Um, yeah, just go ahead and copy that file in there and then we can go ahead and take this out. All right, I have retrieved our robot. We're gonna put the robot down there. We're gonna put this card in there. Let's go ahead and boot this up. And now ideally we could also throw, I think I'm, I forget what's, I forget the, what this robot even has there. It's a, a, I mean, it could be, I think there's a wireless card in there, which means we could eventually figure out how that works and then just get it set up so I don't have to use a floppy disk to transfer stuff over. But um, let's copy MNT, no, oh, that's 6F4, yes. And uh, what did we call it? It's called test. Let's copy that. Can I copy to slash? Uh, to that, ah, gross. All right, it doesn't know that that is an alias for slash home or whatever, but that's fine. Um, we'll move that to test.lua. Okay, um, and I, thinking about it, uh, we do need to do some modifications here because we need to require robot. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and leave that in there. We'll say uh, local robot equals require robot. And then down here, we can go ahead and try. So we'll say move, uh, what should we have them do? Let's say move two squares forward, turn right, three squares forward, okay, two forward, right, three forward, and then two up, and then down. Let's try that. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So now we have a much cleaner way of setting up complex movements. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, with that done, I'm gonna take this robot downstairs and uh, we'll do a little bit of planning. If we think at a high level of what the robot's going to do, <clears throat> it, well, it's it's got kind of two modes. One is going to be to go out here, uh, stock up, and then do a loop all the way around and then come back. Um, does it need to, no, it doesn't need to drop anything off. If, yeah, and then, yeah, just come back to charge and then make sure it's facing the same way. So that's gonna be sort of the feed loop. Um, then the second loop is gonna be to come over here, grab stuff, come out here, go up, and then do a whole bunch of uh, crazy button pushing and and uh, harvesting and whatnot. Uh, not harvesting, but feeding. Um, uh, seed, planting, Blah. Okay, so, <laughs> I'm gonna ignore kind of the high level part for now and just think about um, what the movement is going to be. So if we think about this, um, the movement steps are going to be, we want to go forward one. So I have this, yeah, I have this facing above the chest and it should be able to open the chest while it's above it. So I'm gonna write down, I'm writing down on a note card basically what we wanna do. Okay, I think I have this <laughs> vaguely set up um, and I've called this feed cycle. Um, I created another little helper function. I said robot use down, move forward, and then robot use down. Um, just cause that's gonna get repetitive otherwise. Um, this will be the way that we, we feed a cage. And this presumes that, uh, you know, if we move forward, we're over the other spot in the cage. Um, I think for now I'll actually comment out these use down lines. Um, and then just say, okay, we move forward. So first thing we do is we move forward um, to do, get stuff from chest. 
Then we move four forward and turn left, and then we do the feed cage. Then we move four forward and turn left, we do a feed cage. We move seven forward, we're across the room now, we feed the cage. We turn left, we do four forward and feed cage, four forward left, feed cage, seven forward, feed cage, and now it's time for us to go back. So we turn left, we go four forward, we go left, we go five forward, and then we turn around. <laughs> okay. So who knows if that's gonna work. Um, let's run MNT 6F4 test and see how that goes. Okay, it moves over there, it turns left, it goes there. If it does a full loop and comes back to where it's supposed to be. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. No, 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 oh no. Oh no, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a problem. These steps are a problem. Go. There, it turns there, should go seven and eight. There we go, turns, turns, turns. Ba, 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 and it should now come all the way back, hopefully. Aha, perfect, okay. So it has now done a full, it's done a full navigation loop. Um, now the question is, can we get it to do the same thing uh, going up here? Now that one's going to be a little more complex. Let me fix this up and then we'll jump back into Code World. Alrighty, so if we go into here, let's uh, let's replace some of these to-dos real quick. Uh, we'll uncomment, use down. Uh, we'll assume that everything we're doing from here on should be close to what we're actually doing. Um, let's say, uh, let's say replenish supplies. And actually interest, okay. So I'm trying to, I've also been trying to figure out kind of what standard behavior is um, in terms of uh, whether we use camel case uh, or underscore case. And I, I don't know, it seems to be kind of an open question still for me. Um, we'll create this function, uh, replenish supplies, and it won't do anything for now. So we'll keep that as a to-do, but that's, that's fine. Um, so that's the feed cycle done. The feed cycle in theory is done. Yeah, I mean, it's done. We need to figure out what replenish supplies looks like, but the feed cycle is done, and that's great. Um, let's make a note here that this will require, um, requires 12 wheat. Um, and we'll just save that for later. Replenish supplies, I'm also gonna hang on uh, for a second. Um, if we think about the way that, uh, let's, let's look at kind of our other top level function. I also don't know if I have to worry about the order in which I declare these functions in Lua. Um, we may shuffle this around after I do some experimenting. Um, let's do the plant cycle. Okay, so the plant cycle is going to look like, um, and I, if, if for those of you who've uh, watched me do kind of programming in videos before, you know that I like to deal with generally high abstract ideas and then break them down into details. Um, and I think that's something that we're going to do here as well. So what we want to do first is, uh, well, actually, we'll move forward and replenish supplies. <laughs> we're gonna assume that replenish supplies is something that we can use across both of these. And really, um, regardless of which cycle we're going into, we shouldn't need more than a stack of wheat and a stack of seeds. Um, and we do want to make sure that we have enough uh, that we leave uh, some in the chest as well so that we don't end up in some weird situation where we have only seeds or only wheat in the chest and can't gather anymore. So we'll worry about that when we get to it. But we'll replenish the supplies and then we're going to say, move to farm and that's fine. We'll just have to pick a side because otherwise we're assuming that this is from the position on top of the chest. And so I don't want to, that the name to sort of be misleading there. So move to farm is gonna get us to the right position. Um, and we'll assume that it puts us right in front of one of the buttons. So then what we need to do is say robot.use. Um, and of course here I'm dealing with some abstract functions and some just like detail functions. Yeah, okay, we're actually using use. Um, let's create move to farm before I forget about it. Um, plop that up here as a to-do as well. I have a feeling that I can't refer to functions before defining them, so I just want to make sure that um, that I'm, I'm put. That's why I'm putting them in in an order that's kind of unusual for me, at least. Okay, move forward, replenish supplies, move to the farm, turn on the thing, um, and then we need to sleep. And I think OS sleep for I don't know, call it five seconds. Um, I think that's right. Um, and then robot use again. So we push the button to uh, display to eject water uh, over the farmland. We wait a second, uh, or well, we wait five seconds, then we turn up, hit the button again so that it sucks up the water, 
and then we can get to planting. So what I want to do, I think, let's see, I'm trying to figure out what is the easiest way for us to do that. Well, we need to do some basic navigation. I don't think this merits a function. In fact, move to farm probably doesn't merit, merit a function either. I'll say move to button as a comment, and I'll say move to first, you know, to farm corner. And from there, we need to sort out. Let's 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 say uh, let's say move to bottom left farm corner because then we can plan some sort of zigzag pattern that we can use for both sides of our farm. Um, and so we'll do that. Um, plant farmland. Uh, let's say plant seeds. And this will be this will be a complex function. After that, we'll need to move to other button, <laughs> and then we will uh, do this robot use OS sleep five robot use again. Um, which I guess the fact that we're copying and pasting uh, does indicate that hey, we could probably stand to. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, and this this move to bottom left farm corner is also something that we'll repeat. Uh, so that's a good indicator that these four lines are something that should be in a function. So we just call that function twice instead of having duplicate code. Um, so let's say function move from button to farm. Uh, yeah, bottom left farm corner. <laughs> that is a that is a great name. Uh, we can go ahead and say, yeah, paste this in here because um, our farm is symmetrical, so we can do that twice. Um, so move from button to, well, actually, that's not all that this function does. So that name's bad anyway. Uh, what are we going to call this? Um, cycle farm. I don't know. Uh, when you can't come up with something useful, at least don't try and make it seem as though it were useful. Um, and then we can get rid of those lines. So move to button, cycle the farm, plant the seeds, uh, cycle the farm, plant the seeds. And of course, uh, actually, since we're doing cycle, yeah, plant the seeds, that can just be part of this big function. So we're not, we're not repeating ourselves. Um, so we've moved forward. We move to the button. We cycle farm. We move to the other button. And then, yeah, we just have to uh, make our way back to the charger. Okay, so a lot of stubs in here. I'm gonna look at trying to fill these out real quick, mostly the movements and stuff, um, and I will be right back. This is gonna be interesting. So I've, uh, I have I wrote a little helper function called plant row, and this assumes that we're standing facing one of the long rows, um, and it just says for i one to seven, so seven times uh, plant a seed and then move forward, and then plant a seed at the very end. Um, so this should get us, uh, or actually, hang on a second. We don't want to plant a seed and move forward seven times, do we? We want to plant a seed and move forward six times and then plant a seed at the very end because we're already on one of them. Yeah. Um, okay. So cycle farm looks like this. It says, um, this is so this assumes we're standing in front of a button. We hit the button. We sleep. We hit a button. Then we go down. We go two to the right. We go forward. We go left. We go three forward. We go and then we turn around. <laughs> This is basically to put us at the bottom left of uh, our row. We plant a row, we go left, we turn forward and left. We plant a row, we go right and forward and right. If you think about lawn mowing, this is <laughs> vaguely what this is doing. We turn and then we go forward a little bit and we turn again. Then we do another row. Oops, I need that there. Left, forward, left, plant row. So the total plant cycles look like this. We move forward, we replenish our supplies. Then we do this long complicated dance to get us to <laughs> in front of the first button we then plant that farm uh so yeah or, or, yeah so this plant the farm is going to hit the button move down and and plant that whole side um then we move to the other button we do that one and then we move from there all the way back to the charger i am sure that there are going to be some errors here okay i'm going to copy this down and i'm actually going to save it to autorun.lua um i'm not sure if this is still the case but i think that should actually try and start up when the thing mounts, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, so if we pop in here, it's gonna say, hey, no robot found. So this is basically the the, 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 thing that, uh, the thing that runs once we plug it in. So hopefully we shouldn't have to really do anything with the robot other than give it the floppy, at which point it will start trying to execute 
this <laughs> very interesting command. Um, I'm gonna have to be careful to get out of the way. Okay, it moves there, it moves there, it goes up, comes around here, and I'm really just seeing, it's not trying to do anything just yet, is it? It's one too far over. Uh, no, 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 that's gonna be a problem. It is waiting five seconds to, yeah, and it fails because now it's all completely off. But we can see what it was going for, right? That's not, that's not too bad. I mean, that's, that's sort of self-correcting, right? So this is basically the way it's going to plant everything down that way. Oh, no, it does one more than it. Oh, no, it's going, yeah, it's going back over here. Oh, no. What did you try and do? No, okay, I didn't. Hey, he, okay. Lots to do. Can we stop? Can I stop you? Can I stop you from running the program that you're that you're currently running? Yeah, okay. It's gonna be it's going to run into a lot of different <laughs> a lot of different issues now, because it it didn't get all the way to the button, so now it's trying to farm land that's over water, and now it's just running into stuff, and now it's going yeah, okay. It's trying to get back to its charging station. <laughs> okay, so we're off by a bit, but that's okay. Um, I think it is done. Let's uh let's go ahead and actually edit it inside here and just see how miserable an experience that may happen to be. Um, F4, auto run. Okay. So, first first error is that we did not, uh, let's see, the plant cycle did not have us going far over enough and that was my fault, or it had us going too far, rather. Um, five FL, so we cycle farm, cycle farm, cycle farm. Uh, well, actually, sorry, cycle farm leaves us facing so the cycle farm starts going over here. Yeah, and we, we saw it do this zigzag because it managed to somehow get sort of back on course and then like this. So we need to go turn around, then one, two, three, and then over a fair bit. So one, two, and I think I'm gonna lose, nope. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think I was shy there as well. So let's check that, uh, seven. Let's see. This is the going over the, oh yeah, I'm very shy of that. Uh, seven forward and two up. And then who knows about the last step, we'll have to see. Uh, let's save that and close it. And we'll go ahead and grab you and put you back in your starting location because you have no mechanism to recover by. Put that there and plop you down. Make sure you're facing the right way. And boom. Oops, no, not in your hand and your floppy drive. Huh, interesting. You don't run on startup now? Huh. Oh, it was off. Right, okay. Uh, let me get out of the way. So I don't wanna inadvertently block this, which does bring up the point that if entities manage to get up here, well, there'd be potential troubles. Um, let's try plugging you in again. There we go, okay. Let's watch this time. There we go. Should turn, and now we should be in front of the button. Yes, we're facing the button. We're pushing it, we're waiting five seconds, which is disabled for now, but that's okay. We go down, we go like this, we get to the start, and now we start our seed run. Fantastic. All right, now it's coming back over. Now let's see if I got this part right. I hope I did, there we go, okay. Oh, it tried to go up twice, well, that's fine. It tried to go up twice instead of once, we only need to go up once, and now it should be making its way to the bottom left corner so we can reuse that block, and yeah, now, planting these rows shouldn't be anything we need to test because we're basically doing a mirror image of what we did over there, and we, re we can reuse the code to do that. So, uh, now it's just a question of, is it going to find its way back to the charging station? Because if so, we have got this thing in the bag. Ah, <laughs> last thing we needed to do is tell it to turn. So let's uh, watch it at work. Yes, all right, it's waiting five seconds. And it shuts the water off. And now it's gonna come over here and plant these. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic, okay. So yeah, we have a farmer bot and look at that. That is glorious. Our bot has gone and replanted everything. It is going back to his charging station 
that cycle at least works perfectly. Okay, so I'm a little nervous about just how long this video is going to be. So um, here's my thinking. We need to figure out how we're going to load this guy up. And the concern is making sure that we always have some room in here for uh, these, for the wheat and for the seeds. Now, hmm, actually, it would be, I guess, possible for an item hopper to fill up completely with one and then not let anything else through. But let's ignore that possibility for now because I don't know how to deal with it. Um, here's my thinking. We will go ahead and fill these up like that and then I'm basically just gonna block these off like so. Now, when things fall into the hopper, uh, let's simulate an example. Things fall into the hopper, they're going to go ahead and fill up. What we will plan on doing at any point in time, we only need one stack of these things. So I think anytime we come over here and stock up, we will uh, fill our inventory. Yeah, so we're gonna try and fill the top rows um, so that we have, uh, let's, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna plan on having wheat here and seeds here, and we're gonna plan on having a stack of it. Um, huh, I guess I don't have a stack of it right now. I'll have to run and grab a stack of it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and scroll through here and we'll basically try and grab from this slot, then this slot, then this slot, then this slot, but only grabbing one less than the amount that is in there until we either get down the entire row or we have completely, uh, we have filled up our stack. So we do have the ability to look at the quantity of the stack um, from the uh, inventory API. So that'll be the plan. I'll, we'll go ahead and loop so we get inventory slots. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll say from one to nine, and then we'll break early um, if we manage to fill up a stack. Um, so for, in this case, we would take 55 out and put that into our first inventory slot. Um, we have to do some equip and unequip here, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I think that should work. And then, yeah, the only other issue is there is the possibility that items in this hopper could fill up and we could run out of, yeah. So if we ended up with all seeds, all the, you know, all seeds all the time, could that happen? Yeah, I guess it could. Well, we'll just have to cross that bridge if it comes to it. I think I have something here. Let's go up to the very top. I've included uh, the inventory controller, uh, which we played with a little bit in a prior episode, I think on last Friday. So I've named that inv. And then I've also required sides. I think we'll eventually just print out the sides and, and grab them that way. But here is our replenish supplies. So we go from I equals one to nine. So go through this loop. Uh, from one to nine. We say, if robot count in inventory slot one, so the number of things that we have in item slot one is 64, then break out of this loop, we're done. Otherwise, available is the stack in slot, and we're looking down, and we're looking at slot number I. So first we're looking at slot one of the thing directly below us, then looking at slot two of the thing below us, and et cetera. So we're looking at the stack, and we're saying, how big is that stack? If the uh, stack is greater than one, then we're going to take from there, uh, side slot down, uh, sorry, yeah, we're gonna take from there. So that side's down, so below us, in that slot, the amount that is available, minus one. Now, it won't take necessarily that full amount. I think it's just going to fill up the stack, but then, yeah. So we're basically gonna take any, if we don't have 64, we're going to suck up any excess above one so that we leave one in the inventory to mess with. And we're gonna have to do some testing of this, but I think I can go ahead and just copy this here. The only difference here is that we are checking if slot two is there. Now, mm, inventory suck from slot. I think that's going to put things into the actual inventory. Let's double check here. Get second slot. Um, let's see, suck into slot. Yeah, it's blah, blah, blah. Suck from slot, takes a double count. Um, from the selected slot of the inventory, it puts them into the currently selected slot. So we need to make sure that we have selected the right slot. Um, and I think that's in the robot API. Let's just double check. Select, yeah, robot to select. So that selects the current slot. You, you notice there was a green outline um, around the selected slot. So if available, let's do, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just do, Yeah, just so we only have to do it once. Let's say robot.select slot one. So that's our own slot one. And then here we'll do robot.select slot two. That way we make sure that we're pulling stuff in. And that also does mean we don't have to put these arguments here. 
Um, cause it's going, if we don't pass an argument, it's going to look at what our selected slot is. Okay. So is that all that we had left? The plant cycle, blah, 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 replenish supplies, blah, 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 blah. No, not quite because we need to equip stuff and unequip stuff. And that's something that we missed during both of these cycles. So replenish supplies. And then we're going to robot.select two, which is redundant. I, I, I realize, and we'll say, um, inv.equip, because that's something we get from the inventory controller. And then at the very end here, we're gonna go inv equip again. So we take the stuff out of the slot, um, so then it's back in our inventory. And the same thing with our cycle, let's see, not cycle farm, our feed cycle. We're going to replenish supplies, then we will uh, robot.select one, and then inv.equip. And then at the very end down here, we inv dot equip again. Okay, so that is the high level here. We should now get all the stuff from the from the chest until we fill up our the one slot of our inventory and then we'll go about doing our process. Now, what do we need is, uh, the, the last thing that we need is sort of a main loop that does the feed cycles and then every so often does a plant cycle. Our farm is not enough to maximize the amount of sheep that we're going to be breeding, which is a little bit of a bummer. Maybe we'll have to expand out the farm a little bit. Um, we'll have to see in a future point. But for now, I think we're going to go with this. So let's say, um, uh, while true and do, and this will run then forever. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say, let's see. So yeah, every 12 minutes feed. And that should mean that we don't run out of wheat, that we're in theory building up more wheat um, than, uh, than we're giving away. And uh, we are in theory gonna be harvesting. Now it is possible because who knows, after 50 minutes, not everything might have grown all the way. So we might not replenish things, but I think that'll give us enough of a margin to work with. We're gonna have to see how this plays out over time. So while true do, we'll go ahead and say uh, feed cycle and then os.sleep and we're gonna have to give it, um, let's see, 12 minutes times 60, cause OS sleep takes seconds. Uh, feed cycle and OS sleep. Actually, we can put this in a loop. Uh, so let's say four I equals one to four uh, do uh, feed cycle and sleep. And then at the end of that, then we'll go ahead and do a plant cycle. Okay. Okay, so this is off. It doesn't seem to be charging, and I wonder why exactly that is. It's right on top of this block, so I'm confused as to why it's not charging. Why are you not charging? Got a redstone block right there. That is not a job for today. Our job for today is to sort this out. Okay, so there's 56 in there, so it should take 55 from there, and then if I put, let's see, so that leaves, how many does, yeah, it's 55, so it should, let's, let's make this easy, right? So let's put 61. So it should take 60 from there, and then it should take four from here. So that should leave us with four after it does its stuff. And I'm just gonna be nice with the rest of this, because well, if that one works, then we can assume that this one works as well. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and boot this up, and then we will plug in the floppy, and it should either crash or run. Uh, yeah, did you know if computer has a form? Yes, it does. There we go. Oh no. Oh, ha! One tiny little error is that we never call this main function. Yeah, we need to, we need to do that. There we go, save and done. Let's go ahead and unplug you just to make sure that this works correctly. There. Oh, nope, there. And going in here, and it is gonna go do a, so it has equipped. Yeah, it has equipped some wheat, let's look. Oh no, it took more than it was supposed to, huh. I mean, I guess that's not the end of the world, but that's going to mean, does that mean you have more than just in your main inventory? Yes, you do. All right, well, I mean, I guess that's fine. Uh, actually, no, that's not fine. That's not fine. No. All right, we're gonna have to, so if it does try and suck up more than it can actually fill, take, then it's gonna put it in slot two, and that's gonna mean that it's gonna assume that these, when we look, assumed that seeds are in here, that's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and take this out. Okay, so this should be fairly simple for us to fix. If we go robot count equals 64, we're gonna go ahead and say local um, 
has count equals robot.count, and then we'll just say if has count count equals 64. And then when we're deciding how many we're going to take, um, what we'll do is we'll say math.min of either however much there is available or um, let's see, 64 minus has count. Yeah, so if we have 63, then we'll say, hey, we'll take as many as you have, or if we, yeah, then never mind, just one. So we'll take the lesser of those two, and that should do it. So let's go ahead and just do that same thing here. Take that, oops, uh, no, I did that wrong. Let's grab those, and boom, like that, and then just swap that out. So yeah, we don't take more than a stack by accident because then it's going to slop over into the inventory slots that uh, we don't have selected, which I, I, I don't know, that, that kind of bums me. Um, okay, fair enough. Um, and then we'll just make sure we're calling main in here. I'm gonna pop this over again. Let's go ahead and commit it. Uh, bug fixes and up and let's hop back over. <laughs> we have the, uh, the floppy disk. And I just realized exactly why our charger isn't charging the robot. It has it has no power. How could it change it? Yeah, we're not routing any power to it because we got rid of that uh, middle pillar. So we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to actually get power to this. Thing. <laughs> what the heck is wrong with me? I'm such an idiot. Um, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> whoops. Uh, I'm gonna steal all your inventory. Thank you. Um, plop. You can boot up in the meantime. Plop stuff in here. Okay, let's uh, verify that this is good now. So we'll put, yeah, actually, so if we put a stack there, um, then it should only take, yeah, so it should take 63 from there and then only one from there. So it should see 34 there. And we'll just do the same. We'll just toss all the rest of this in here or whatever. Um, cool. Okay. And yeah, in the meantime, I'll wire, <laughs> I'll wire up power here. Okay, we are powered. Let's go. And how are you doing? Yes, okay, it took just one stack, which should mean it left 34 right there. Perfect. All right. And that, so that left the one. Wait, and, and yes, yes, it did. Okay, um, let me go ahead and, <laughs> let me wire up some cabling here. Oh gosh, I can't, that's such an idiot thing. Um, although actually, without that being accessible, um, no, that's okay. Go ahead and just put this redstone block back there. Um, and then, uh, bop, 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 bop. That'll run it there. And I'm gonna replace this. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've got some, I've got some extra capacitors here. So we can just go ahead and uh, line those up. One, two, three, four. But ladies and gentlemen, that I think is going to do it for me today. This is a 50 minute script, so who knows how long that this thing is. <laughs> I, mean, it, who, I mean, it could break anywhere. We tested the parts, it's probably fine. But uh, you know, I'll let you know in the next episode if we happen to have encountered any issues. Um, in the meantime, let me know your thoughts, your comments, uh, always welcome. We're, we're gonna have to figure out, uh, may, I think maybe we'll replace the robot with a drone. We'll see about getting this onto an EEPROM. We'll have to figure out the wireless redstone stuff. Lots of things to do. Um, looking forward to that in the future. Probably also expanding this farm out just a little bit so that we can get a faster harvesting rate. But let me know what you're looking forward to. As always, your suggestions and comments are very much appreciated. Likes and subscribes. Also, by the way, if I'm being self promotion <sighs> ah, All right, I'm out of breath. That's going to do it for me. I will see you soon. Cheers.